My name is Josh Byrne and I'm on a mission to prove that energy efficient and sustainable homes don't have to be expensive and complicated. I'm looking at every aspect of the design and build of my very first family home on this journey and I'm sharing everything that I learn along the way with you. If you think of a typical building site, you're probably seeing images of rubble and timber off carts, pie wrappers and even a few classic iced coffee containers. One of the things we're often told is just how clean, neat and tidy our building site is. And look, it's not because I'm fussy or also a little bit organised, and in fact we've got cameras here all the time, though that might help a little bit. It's because we sat down from the outset of this process and arranged with our builder to have a proper waste management plan in place. And what we said was that how we avoid waste, how we reuse it and recycle it is just as important as the design of the homes and the build of the homes themselves. And that's what this episode is all about. How we can all do it much, much better. Well, one of the things we're doing that's really very, very simple is this looks like a typical bulk uh, site waste bin and it's filled with all the normal things from this part of the building process. There's bits of concrete, there's sand, uh, there's plastic and wood and steel. Um, but it's what happens to this at its end point that is really cool. Typically, well over half of the construction waste generated in WA ends up in landfill. And you know what? It's a figure that makes me very, very uncomfortable. And once you see just how easy it is to deal with waste better, you'll wonder why everyone isn't doing it. So give us an idea how much waste is generated, for example, overall in WA. Uh, WA as a state, yep. unfortunately as a uh, mainland state, has the worst record in the, the country. Right. Um, we produce the most waste per capita and we recycle the least. Okay. Over 8 million tonnes are produced wow. as all forms of waste, that's CNI, all streams. That's CNI uh, commercial industrial, um, C&D, construction demolition and yep. municipal waste off the side of your verge. Yep, so how much of that is construction and demolition waste? Uh, unfortunately over 55% or so all the of that waste, yes, yeah, so we are the largest contributor as an industry, construction right. industry is our largest contributor of waste. Alright, so that's, that's over 4 million tonnes per year in WA of construction and demolition waste. How much of that is actually recycled? Unfortunately only 30 to 40 percent as a state. And the rest is going to landfill? Most of it's going okay. to landfill, yeah. Yep. yeah. And tell us through the process you're doing here, how much is recovered? Uh, we're very fortunate. The, the yep. state of the art facility we've installed here enables yep. us to capture between 80 and 90 percent of all the mixed waste in a single bin that comes through our process yep. and divert it away from landfill. Okay, and you're doing it in a way that's obviously a sustainable business model, yep. because you're a company and you're still here, yep. um, why is there more of this? From a supply chain structure, yep. Yep. there's a, a logistical issue where there's a lot of landfill sites close by to yeah. developments, yeah. and our yeah. trucks actually drive past four of those landfill sites yeah. to get here. So that's amazing, and look, credit to you, um, but again, I'm just, I'm just always amazed at why there is more of this, but um, well done for leading the way. Thank you. That was absolutely awesome, particularly how small the footprint is and the fact that this processing plant is still just on the edge of the city. It's so accessible in terms of waste being generated in the area. But what amazes me is that why this isn't the norm. Uh, and I think Jake was pretty easy on the regulators. Um, really, this should be common practice. It's, it's sinful that we're throwing so much stuff away and there's a skip bin after skip bin of C and D waste just being carted away. But I guess for the moment, as he flagged, the emphasis and the answer is increasing awareness uh, amongst consumers, like myself. So we ask the builder to make sure their waste is recycled uh, and uh, you know we keep pushing for it. We've adopted the three R approach for the Josh's House project. Reduce, reuse, recycle. As we've just seen, we recycle as much of our waste as possible. But we firstly aim to reduce our waste by simply doing our homework and not over ordering building materials. We reuse as much as we can and this was particularly important in dealing with the original house that was on the block before we began. It was a basic asbestos and timber home that we deconstructed, disposing of the asbestos safely and putting the timber, window frames, doors, roof sheeting and even the old bathtub aside for reuse in other projects. Our interest in having a waste management plan provided the perfect opportunity for our builder who jumped at the chance to refine the way they deal with waste. 
Look, we've had a couple of goes at recycling. We're quite conscious of recycling at Highbury. Um, and uh, the last couple of goes haven't been tr tremendously met within not only the company but out on site. They've been difficult to manage. This system is brilliant. You know, we put everything into that bin and it gets sorted out at their site. And look, I'm reminding everyone who comes to site, there's our waste management plan, please adhere to it. The waste management plan uh, incorporates a lot of different areas. It's not only the, the management of waste on site, it's the management of waste off site. Have a look how neat it is. Have a look how good everyone's treating it. I think that um, it's going to be a little bit uh, of work. You know, it'll, it'll take some work, as all new things do in the industry. Uh, waste is expensive, and if you contain it to a, to a small bin and get that taken away, and hopefully that gets you know, used again, fantastic. One of the things about building new homes at an affordable price is the builders and their tradies like to use new materials. But with the landscaping, that's an area where I could actually specify reused, pre-loved and repurposed materials. I mean, things like these awesome salvage logs. We've used secondhand timber for the pergola and the decking. Uh, and look, it can cost more, but if you shop around carefully, you can save money. And also, it's got this awesome look, this awesome feel, and it's really going to just look, yeah. The duck's nuts, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, good quality second-hand materials aren't in short supply. Just check out this incredible timber yard located around the corner from our building site. I think it's fair to say we hit the jackpot. Everything in this yard was destined for landfill. The beauty about salvage wood is, you know, generally it's well seasoned, very old. And, you know, of course, when they were cutting this timber 70 to 100 years ago, you know, Western Australia was actually a forest. Um, you know, so the colours, uh, the grain of these timbers are beautiful. Um, you know, that's probably the big difference. You know, there's enough recycled timber in WA through demolitions and just progress to take a you know, large proportion of the building products. But I think it's just, you know, become public, more public aware Again, the industry needs assistance from the government. Uh, there should be an incentive for developers and people that want to demolish an existing property to make sure that that waste is put to good use. I need more clients like Josh. <laughs> How uncanny is this? Just as we're putting this episode on waste to bed, there's a Department of Housing property right across the road from where we're living at the moment that's being demolished. Uh, and by the looks of it, nothing's being salvaged. The whole lot's being smashed up, put into trucks and dragged away. And uh, just check this out. This is some footage that my wife Kelly got yesterday on her phone, showing the excavator just bashing up the roof, all the roofing timbers, all of the floorboards, which would no doubt be Jarrah, uh, all just being bashed up, put in a truck uh, to, be, to be carted away. Uh, look, that's just, that's just sinful, really. I mean, that's good timber there. I mean, these homes, must be probably 50, maybe even 60 years old. That's timber that's come out of our state forests, you know, uh, at an environmental cost. And it's a, it's a long-term product. They've looked after and used in something like housing for flooring and what have you. It lasts for a long time, but instead, gone. No value placed on it. I think it's a crime. I'm really wrapped with how we've approached uh, waste management with this project uh, and how that's contributed to further reducing the environmental footprint of the build itself. Um, and what's interesting is it's not that hard. It's a, it's a matter of like communicating with your builder uh, and letting them know uh, what you want. And the options are there, they're pretty straightforward. And let's just hope that more people asking those questions leads to greater change. For a fact sheet on the Josh's House Waste Management Plan, and to access all of the free information, go to joshushouse.com.au. You can also sign up to our e-newsletter, take a look at our photo library, and watch all of the earlier videos. And to keep up to date, and to have your say, like our Facebook page, and follow me on Twitter. Really gonna the ducks nuts, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>